Greetings, programmers, and welcome to Getting to Know PyScriptor, the feature-rich and lightweight Python IDE. I am your host, Jim McKeith. Joining me on this presentation today are Kyle Wheeler, General Manager for Whole Tomato and Embarcadero, as well as Kirikos Avalos. I'm probably not pronouncing his name right. He is the developer and chief maintainer of both PyScriptor, the Python IDE, and Python for Delphi. Today's webinar is focused on PyScriptor, but I want to tell you real quick about Python for Delphi. We did a webinar with it about a year ago, actually a series of webinars. It's a bridge, a bi-directional bridge, allowing you to work and use code from Python and Delphi interchangeably. So you can use Delphi and libraries in Python and Python libraries in Delphi. You can find the replay of those webinars as well as some other tutorials and such on the GitHub repository you see on the screen now. Since that original webinar, we've worked with Karakos to expand Python for Delphi from just Windows support to Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and Android is coming very, very soon. Also included in there is a set of libraries that allow you to use the VCL and FireMonkey from Python applications to build your Python GUI applications with. Now I'll turn things over to Kyle Wheeler to talk about Embarcadero's sponsorship of PyScriptor. Hello, thank you for joining us. And thank you for Kirikos for the work you've done with PyScriptor uh, and Jim for the support and driving this project forward. I'm excited about PyScriptor and what's to come with Embarcadero. If you've seen uh, or been following along, we've been expanding our portfolio to include new tools. We started that effort with DevC++, an open source IDE that was built in Delphi and we sponsored an update to it. Uh, the feedback there was great. Uh, then we started looking for other tools and add other tools to see if there's an overlap or a fit within our toolbox uh, that we could showcase or bring more attention to. So why PyScriptor and why Python? Well, if you've joined any of our Python related webinars, you've seen that there are many synergies between the two languages. And there was a lot of interest in more tools that could support development in both. So Kirikos has done a great job at developing PyScriptor and bringing it to what it is today. And we saw that it was built in Delphi and then we saw how great of an IDE it was, we had to support its development. So we did. And we expect to bring more tools like this to light that work well within our developer ecosystem. So if you've got a tool that you're working on, and want to discuss some possibilities, feel free to reach out to Jim or myself directly. We're excited to support more open source projects and offer more tools to our existing customers and users. The future of Embarcadero looks pretty bright and you should expect to see some more tools and offerings from us along the way. Again, thank you for joining us today. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Jim to take us through the nuts and bolts. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. Now I'll turn things over to Kirikos so you can learn all about PyScriptor. Hello to everyone. Thank you, Jim, for introducing me. Thanks to Mbracadero for organizing this and for supporting PyScriptor more generally. So what we will do in this session is we'll provide a kind of overview of PyScriptor, introducing some of the main features and some of the nice stuff that there is there. So PyScriptor is an ID, an integrated development environment. So it's an environment which supports writing, editing, running Python code, Python scripts. It is free and open source. The Python IDs area is competitive. There's a lot of other IDs around, but it aims to strike a kind of nice balance between being powerful, feature-rich, but at the same time, lightweight, not imposing heavy burden, heavy burden on your computers. Also at the same time, it, it strikes a nice balance between being easy to use, easy for new users, but at the same time, having enough punch, enough power to attract professional users. It was developed and it is being developed in Delphi. And in fact, it draws from Delphi some of the aspects of the user interface, as you are going to see. And it's not a new kit. It's been around for a long time. It has an established user base. Just a bit of history here. Development started a long time ago. It was associated with the kind of sister project, the Python for Delphi. Initially, it was uh, a complement of that. It became a kind of overnight success. There were millions and millions of downloads from Google Code. And this went on until, until Google Code shut down around about, I think, in 2000. That was kind of major blow to PyScriptor in the sense that its home page and download side were all broken. Over the next couple of years, it moved to GitHub and development started again. 
and now it's very active and still has a strong following in the face of a very intense competition. So, for example, the downloads from the source words in the last five, six years are more than 1.2 million or around 1.2 million. Some of the requirements and the installations sort of instructions, it is Windows only, but it's available in either 32-bit or 64-bit. The current version works uh, with Python 3.2 or later. You have a choice of either downloading a Windows installer, which will set up the program for you, or you can also use a registry-free installation, a zip file, which is just unzip and run by scripting. Anybody tried with Wine? Because I know Wine has expanded support for Mac OS now as well. Yes, I don't know about recently, but it used to work well with Wine. Okay. So users report using it with Wine on Linux systems, for example, yeah. Okay, cool. And here's some of the links. Support provided by Google Groups. You got the link there. There's uh, blogs that are providing sort of uh, news and support and blog about PyScript. And for the translations, and uh, PyScript comes with around 15 translations, there's a separate homepage. So if anybody wants to contribute to translating the user interface, in a different language, this is the place to go. The main features of PyScript, first of all, it aims to present a kind of modern, customizable, styled user interface. It has all the usual stuff you expect from the ID, an editor with syntax highlighting, code folding. It does have an integrated Python interpreter, and it does provide all the usual stuff you expect, any sense such as code parameter completion, code hints, code definition, and stuff like that. It also contains uh, an integrated Python debugger. So it allows powerful debugging of Python scripts. And it does actually also have a project management system in which you organize your files into logical or physical folders. I will be talking about those in, in some detail later. Unique or advanced features. For example, in other IDs, you need to save your file before you're able to run it. In PyScript, you can just type in the editor and run it without saving the file, which is great for prototyping. It has unit testing support with a specific user interface. It does allow post mortem analysis. So when you run your program and there is an error, you can actually go into post mortem mode and view the call stack, the variables at every frame of the call stack. It supports debugging the different threads, switching threads, making threads active, looking at the state of every thread and so on. And an interesting feature of PyScript is that it does actually allow you to work with remote servers. So you could have your files, for example, residing in a remote box, and you can edit those files, you can run them, you can debug them as if they were local. So you can actually edit the file in the editor, press save, and the file is saved in mode. And the same with debugging. This is based on SSH, and probably we'll be talking about some of those advanced features in a future webinar. Another thing is that it does provide powerful integration with external tools. So, for example, the linters and code checking and format checking and so on. And so that's something which is uh, part of the accessibility of PyScript. So let's get uh, some feeling of what PyScript looks like. So in relation to the user interface, I'll be showing you the actual, the real stuff in a second. But the lay of the different forms is configurable and persistent between sessions. It also has this thing that Delphi has with uh, a separate debug layout, so it's back automatically to the normal layout at the end of debugging. You can see here, for example, the, the tabbed editor here with different files open. On the left-hand side, you've got various docking windows, the project manager, the file explorer, the code explorer. I'll be talking about those in a second. And at the bottom, you've got the Python interpreter. This is the default layout. You can actually rearrange stuff. For example, you might want to 
float, for example, the Python interpreter, or you could want to dock it on the left hand side, depending on, on the size of your screen and uh, whatever else. Some of the aspects of the user interface that I'll be talking about. First of all, we can split the editor and have two different views of the same file. So you can do some change on the top of the file, do some changes at the bottom on the other side, and those are all synchronized. They're working on the same text buffer. Split workspaces. So either vertically or horizontally. For example, here in this picture, one workspace in the top with the tabs and another workspace at the bottom. So you got three different files here open at this particular point in time. You can drag and drop files from the one workspace to the other. The ability here also to work with many files simultaneously. Here you can work with two files simultaneously side by side. Some other features of, of the editor here, code templates and file templates. So you can have specific templates associated with particular file types and also code templates, like for example, a for loop or a class definition or the main program definition and so on. And both of those use a powerful parameter substitution with a wide range of parameters. So this is something we'll cover later on because this is also used with the external tools. It's part of the extensibility of PyScript. It does support all drag and drop both internally, but between applications as well. So you can drag a piece of code from PyScript, for example, to Notepad or to PowerPoint. The drag and drop supports also the HTML format. So if you want to create a presentation with Python code or some other code, you can drag and drop a part of the code, a part of the file into PowerPoint, and you got nicely formatted code looking the same as it looks in the end. It is a drop target file, so you can drag files from File Explorer. And it does support font ligatures, which is a new thing in editing. It's a quick demonstration for that. Say I create a new file here, and I write something like, greater or equal to five. Let's say, then do something, pass. And notice how the greater than or equal looks like one simple as opposed to two. Notice how it changes shape. Wow. When I'm on the line, I actually see exactly what I typed. But when I'm on a different line, I see another symbol which looks like a mathematical greater than or equal symbol. So, that's the so-called font ligature. So that's something that different fonts support. What I'm using right now here is the Cascadia font from the Windows Terminal. One of the nice things makes your code look nicer. So if your font supports font ligatures, so does PyScript. There's various other commands implemented in the editor. For example, you can create copies of a block or you can, uh, for example, here, if I create copies of that, and let's say you got two functions, A and B, you can rearrange them as well in the same way as in, in VS Code. So for example, if you alt move the cursor, you move the block, and so on. So move block up and down, delete block, copy block, all these commands have been implemented in a way which works uh, very similarly to VS Code. Uh, something about the style and so on, different people get different tastes. PyScript supports different styles and different syntax highlighters. In fact, the two features are independent from each other. So basically you can select a style for your application. And for example, here, PyScript is SIPs with different styles. Those familiar with the VCL style, this is basically some of the VCL styles that ship with Delphi. So you can actually change the look and feel of the interface. You can also change the syntax highlighting of the editor. Basically, you can select from a number of predefined themes 
So for example, here you got the preview of those and you see some of those. Many of those are dark, but there's a few white ones as well. You can also touch certain aspects of this in highlighting. So here you can actually change the color in a persistent way of certain elements. In fact, PyScriptor also implements what Microsoft hypes as structured highlighting. Basically in simple terms means that the highlighting takes into account the actual position of an identifier. For example, here you can see the function definitions are actually colored differently. Function names rather in the definition, uh, they're colored different than other identifiers. The same applies to the class names as well. The class names in the definition are colored differently. So it does actually implement PyScriptor certain aspects of what is known as structured highlighting. So wide choice of, of themes and syntax highlighters, easy to create your own by adapting one of the existing ones. And of course, one of the key places when you do Python development is the Python interpreter. It's a great thing to be able to prototype, to try things, to test things while you're developing. And that's one of the nice things in relation to dynamic languages. Just some of the nice things about the Python interpreter. You do have code completion with Python interpreter, as you can see here. You also can execute not just Python commands like dir, but you can execute system commands. Like for example, if I have an exclamation mark, I can get the directory contents of a particular phone folder. I can do various stuff with uh, system commands and so on. I can copy and paste the output. The Python interpreter as well serves another purpose as the standard output, the STD output of running scripts. Okay, you got command history. So you can recall previous commands, all the typical part of the usual part you expect. Some of the other windows providing functionality to PyScriptor. One of them is the code explorer. The code explorer presents a structured view of a Python script. For example, this is the inspect module of the standard Python library. And you can see in the code explorer, you got all the different definitions, all the different symbols of the module. With the different definitions, if you click them, there's synchronization, both ways synchronization between the editor and the code explorer. So I click on a symbol, the, the editor moves to the place that symbol is defined. Or as I scroll down, for example, here, you can see the code explorer synchronized with the editor. So it follows the editor. It shows you the corresponding part definition that you're currently into. You can also highlight uh, a given identifier. So you can use also commands like find definition, find references and stuff like that. One thing I didn't quite demonstrate here, this is something that I first um, got to know through Delphi. This is go to definition by clicking. Mm -hmm. So for example, let me just try to find here an example that it takes you to a different place in the code, either on the same file or on another one. So for example, here, I clicked on processed and took me to the definition. And now I can use the arrows at the top to move, let's say back to the original position or to the new position. This exactly works. Those of you that are familiar with the Delphi feature, it works in exactly the same way as Delphi. Go back, go, go forward and control click on identifiers to find the definitions. I noticed a lot of, it used to be a lot more probably than today, but a lot of uh, code editors and IDEs are made in Delphi for other languages and stuff like that. PyScript for being one example of that. As somebody that's done that, why do you think that is that people kind of do that a lot with Delphi? And is it just because Delphi is inspiring or? <laughs> it's a good question. I mean, indeed, there was a large number of IDs 
for Perl, PHP, Dev C++, made for Delphi. Quite frankly, I think that because at the time, and maybe still now, Delphi is the best way to create Windows applications. Yeah. So the availability of third party controls and so on. And people quite like the way Delphi worked itself and tried to mimic the way they worked. Until recently, there was not many free open source IDs written in other languages. Yeah, yeah. As far as I know. Okay, I'm just curious. For, for me, actually, I mean, if you, if you take this personally, consider this to be the best way to do that. And of course, I was a Delphi user already, so that was very much a natural choice. Another important window in PyScript is the file explorer. And the file explorer mimics the look and feel the Windows file explorer works. It allows you easy navigation to, for example, the various library directories of Python. So this is the library directory or the standard Python library. The nice thing with this Explorer is basically it provides the same context menus as the Windows. So this is very much the same, exactly the same context uh, pop-up as, as in Windows, which lends itself to, for example, the integration with Git. And if you do have this file Explorer and let's say install Tortoise Git, basically you got very powerful Git integration here all the menus that are available with Git are available for you as well. So basically you got powerful Git integration. Also the context menu offers certain features like you can explore a given directory, you can search a given directory. So you have all the power of the Windows File Explorer plus some extra integration with the specific menus that link the File Explorer to the to the application. Okay, so that's about the file explorer. It provides you a view of your file system where you store your files. You can actually, from that view, you can actually, let's say, implement Git functions, use other add-ins you got for except for file explorer, and you can actually easily open files from there as well. Just to show you here, you got the Git clone, the Git create repository here. If you are inside the Git folder, you can commit your files from there. You can actually diff the file, see the differences, for example, with the version of the main repo and all the usual stuff. Finally, there's Project Explorer as well. Project Explorer helps you organize, create a logical view of your folders and files. As you can see here, you can organize the files either if you want, as they are physically stored in the file system, or you can have a different view, a logical view. For example, you could have a folder with HTML files, another folder with scripts and so forth, another folder with assets, images and stuff like that. And that's actually could be then independent of the way or the place, the position in which they are physically stored on disk. Another feature of, of PyScript for the project manager, Project Explorer, it allows you to define different RAM configurations. So basically you have a RAM configuration that runs a server, a different RAM configuration that runs a client and you can execute them independently or uh, one after the other or whatever. So you have all the information there to run different scripts. You can also search and replace all the search and replace facility, allow you to constrain the search and replace within the contents of a project. So only project files are searched. So that's some of the key windows of, of PyScript. All of this you can actually dock around, move, float, and the it out is actually saved. This is a list of some other ID windows I will not be covering the detail today. There is a to-do list which scans the files for to-do comments and allow you to manage your to-do items. There is a finding files, a powerful finding files facility, similar to that 
available in G experts, for example, which allow you to search directories. It allows you also to do search and replace within your file. There is a specialized window which allows you to test, develop, and test regular expressions. Unit testing is also supported with uh, its own um, user interface, uh, kind of similar to the one we have in D unit, for example. There's a messages window which provides you with um, messages. You can actually also store the messages, see older messages, compare, for example, uh, let's say tracebacks from different runs and you have them all available in one place to compare them. And there is the output window, which basically serves as the output of processes running externally. Okay, so these are some of the other views that you have available. Um, the next thing I'll be talking about um, Python specific features. I mean, one of the difference between PyScriptor and some of the other IDs, VS Code, is that PyScriptor is very much focused on Python. So there are some interesting features there in relation to, to, to Python. One of them is switching versions. So some people develop code that runs in different versions of Python. So PyScript allows you to switch versions of Python on the fly. Okay, so that's uh, one of the features. It provides some features like, for example, path inspection or a function list we can switch quickly and installation of modules with, with, uh, with PIP. Um, just to quickly demo this kind of features. So, so under tools, for example, you got um, Python path, which gives you a list of the folders on your Python path. Um, you can install modules with PIP easily, for example, if I go and say tools, tools um, install packages with pip, I just type the name of the package, for example, scipy. And then you can see here, it, it automatically downloads and um, will install the scipy package, for example, using pip. You can see here now the package has now been installed and I can go and say my interpreter right away, import scipy. Notice here how you get uh, code completion for modules as well. And scipy wow. has been imported. That's so cool. <laughs> um, uh, the function list is also kind of nice. This is again something borrowed from uh, the experts. So here I can do control go and just start typing, for example, signature until I narrow down. I can use the cursor as well and just it will take me to the function for the signature. So this is a kind of um, feature of, of the experts been uh, implemented by script code completion i did gave you some uh, some glimpse of that as i said um let's start a new module here um when i press control space for example i see a list of symbols at the high level this is the built-ins and i can see the help of those there is some um, support provided for keywords So for example, I can import sys module. And then when I say sys dot, I see all the symbols available for sys along with the documentation of those on the site. So again, the code completion is, is kind of nice. Code hints as well, maybe here. Yeah, for example, this function here, is a function defined in, uh, in the module expect, or this variable here author is defined in the module expect, you get information. In fact, this is clickable as well. You can, using the hint, you can go straight into the definition of this variable author in the other module. 
Okay, so code hints as well are provided. Code definition, we saw examples of that, and also find references, all the usual fans for stuff. Some of the things regarding code completion, there's a number of features. First of all, the size of the list you see here. Also, complete as you type, whether you want completion to be activated as you type. Complete Python keywords, whether you want keywords to be completed as well. Auto complete without one entry, I will be demonstrating that. That's kind of interesting. Um, complete with word breakouts, uh, break, break, word break characters. For example, you start typing a function, you press the open bracket, and then completion happens automatically. Just one example of, of some of these features. So, for example, if I go in the editor on the interpreter and say from and now we just type K. And because K is the only module that starts with K in the standard library is keyword, it automatically completes keyword. So I just type K from K. And now I just type I am. And because the only keyword with I am is import, it automatically completes that. And then I press space and I type a K. And again, because the only symbol with uh, uh, starts with K in, inside keywords is KW list, that's automatically completed. So basically, this whole line, I've only typed something like six, seven characters, and then got all the line onto, onto the interpreter. And the same works in the editor as well. So not just in the interpreter, for example, here. Again, if I do the same, I type from uh, K. I am K. I get so you can get a lot of saving in typing by using this uh, auto complete without one entry. It can be confusing for beginners and so on because, and that's why it's, it's automatically disabled, but you can do various stuff with the various options, auto completion options. Uh, so that's about code completion. So basically, you got everything that you expect. Some of the other unique stuff that the PyScript has, a couple of different views of the file. Say you got this inspect model here, and um, you want to see how is this disassembled by Python. So basically, there is a view, source code views disassembly. And that will give you the disassembly of the file into, into Python. Um, bytecode and wow. um, say, for example, again, you want to see the documentation of the file automatically generated. If I go and say source code views documentation, I get this file automatically generated from the source code with all the documentation of the module in a nice HTML file, which I can save and uh, I can do whatever I want with it. Okay, so that's some of the kind of nice features of that. The final thing I'll be talking about today is debugging. And PyScript does implement a powerful debugger and it has different views. First of all, debugging is based on breakpoints. You've got uh, breakpoints which you can have enabled or disabled. You can add a condition to the breakpoint, which is checked, and it only breaks if the condition is met. And you got all the usual debugger commands you expect to see. Uh, you can see the commands here, debug, uh, run to cursor, step into, step over, step out, pause, abort. And you got the corresponding icons on the debugger toolbar. Just, um, again, a quick demo of that of debugging with PyScript. What I have here, I have um, a small script which runs a recursive version, a naive recursive version of the Fibonacci generation, uh, numbers that generator. As you can see, the code is kind of simple. If n uh, less than or equal to one, return n, if it's zero or one. Otherwise, return the sum of the previous values. And then the driver program, the main routine here, 
um, just checks if the number is valid and then it prints the numbers from one up to the end term step. So if I want to start debugging here, I mean, one way to start is to set a breakpoint or just say here directly step into, let me just use this as well, the step into. So the stepping into the code, um, now I want to, to look into main, for example, and so, sorry, this was step over. Now I want to step into. So I go into the main within here by pressing F7 or by using these icons here. And um, I can start stepping over now. You can see on the left, the impact of the printing on the, on the right in the Python interpreter, you can see here this, uh, what actually gets printed. And uh, then I step over here. And I'm not getting into the function right now. I'm just stepping over. So you can see the initial Fibonacci numbers. Okay, so that's stepping into and stepping over how it works. I can set a breakpoint here. If I want to break at this stage. So at this stage, I can press, for example, uh, resume. And now the code will actually stop at the breakpoint. There is the breakpoints window. Um, and I can add, this is the breakpoint I'm stopping into. And I can add a condition, for example, only stop when n equals five. And we can see the value of a variable by using the so-called debugger hint. So if I place my cursor on n, I see that the value of n is three. So I'll press resume again. And I can now confirm, for example, that the value of n is indeed five. Uh, so the debugger stopped when the condition was met. I can look at the call stack. I can see the sequence of calls. I can switch between the points. So where the, how the compiler got there in the first place. So for example, you see the initial call came from uh, the main call. Then you got a call into the recursive FIBO. And uh, finally, the last call was a kind of recursive call. And this is the call stack window. There is also support here for many, many threads and thread debugging. So you can switch between threads. And also, this works in conjunction with the variables window. Uh, I say it works in conjunction because um, you can see the call stack, sorry, the contents of any particular uh, frame of the call stack. So for example, here, I'm seeing the variables inside the recursive FIBO function. I can see this value of n equals five. But if I click, for example, on the main function, you can see different things here. I can see the i variable, which has the value of five as well. And if I click on the module side, then I get all the variables defined, all the namespace of the of 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 the module I'm running of the main module. Okay, and as Jim mentioned earlier on, you can actually do stuff here in the editor. For example, you can, for example, say n plus ten. You do a calculation. Oops, uh, I'm in the wrong frame. And just um. Move to the current frame. So the commands executed inside the frame, which is active. So we can see n plus 10 is, is 15. So if I click on a different frame, I can execute commands within that frame. Okay, so the frame gets activated. This frame becomes available in the interpreter. It becomes available in the variable list. Okay, so it gives you quite a lot of power here in terms of drilling into your program, understanding what's actually happening. 
So with the various windows we discussed is uh, the variables, the call stack, the last one I didn't mention, um, as I say, last but not least is the watches window. The watches window allows you to, uh, to view the values of variables at the breakpoints. So for example, here, if I set the breakpoint here standard without, um, let me just uh, fade. Let me set the breakpoint here without a condition. And then I press F9 to stop at the breakpoint. I can see now the value that is six. I press F9, I can see the value is five. I press F9, I see the value is four. So basically that's what it watches. It allows you, and it can be an expression as well, not just a variable name. It will be a Python expression. So it will be the result of the calculation. Okay, uh, we're nearing the end of, of this little talk here regarding the introduction to PyScript. So basically we talked about debugging, all the usual stuff you expect, conditional breakpoints, variables window providing uh, the, with a view of the namespace of, uh, of a given frame. Also notice here the red color here, the red color allows you to observe which variables change the value in the last step of execution. So that's actually kind of nice. The call stack with the thread debugging support as well. The breakpoints window allows you to disable, enable, add condition to breakpoints. And the watches window allows you to watch various expressions. That's uh, about all I want to say regarding uh, the kind of broad overview of PyScript. Um, of course, there's many other advanced features we haven't touched upon. I'm just gonna finish, Jim, uh, by talking a little bit about what's next, what is in the near future. One of the things I'm actually almost done with is the implementation of the language server protocol so that PyScript can use the power of different language servers available. For those of you which are not familiar uh, with the language server protocol, the basic idea is that IDs require a lot of intelligence about the code they're actually using. So what PyScript does right now, for example, scanning the Python code tries to break it down in chunks to identify the different symbols, the different functions, the different class, and then present that to the user, for example, in code completion, in code hints. Now that's a lot of work and the language is evolving. And what the idea of language servers is to move that part of the functionality or the analysis of the code outside the ID and communicate that with a protocol which Microsoft has come up with and it's called the language server protocol. This is becoming rapidly the standard. Those of you that follow Delphi know that Delphi has been moving to the LSP in the recent versions. So that's the next thing. So basically what this would allow basically is to have the same kind of code completion diagnostics that some of the other IDs have. Um, and also would actually liberate free time, development time from let's say supporting that to doing other stuff, other useful stuff for the AD. Accessibility is another area allowing to extend the PyScript uh, functionality using Python itself. And finally, some of the improvements in the editor like what Jim mentioned, the multi or editing, for example, that um, I would, and I'm planning to implement. Okay, so some of the things that are coming into the future, uh, the first one, the language server protocol will be coming, let's say in the next few weeks. So basically this is kind of complete. I would like to finish this session by saying a big thank you. A big thank you to all the people that have been involved and be helping PyScript in different ways. The sponsors, including Embarcadero. And when we're talking about sponsors, there has been a wide, a large number of sponsors over time. Some of them commercial sort of entities, others, many individuals giving small sums of money or some of them even big sums of money to PyScript. The champions, and by that I mean to the people that sort of 
from the early days believed in PyScripter, promoted PyScripter, blogged about PyScripter, uh, in the group support, they provided help to the users. Um, the numerous authors, developers of third party libraries, of which um, PyScripter makes use and make them freely available to other developers like me. Designers, people have been providing um, icons, icon design, logo design to PyScripter. It's worth mentioning that this latest incarnation uh, of the user interface is uh, the work of Andriana Diaz. Uh, kind of special mention. I didn't want to mention specific names here because it's too many to mention. Again, the very large number of translators that have invested time in translating the user interface by scripter into the many languages in which it is available. And that's all I want to say. Thank you very much for, for listening. And of course, Jim, uh, it's question time, I guess, yeah? As far as trying to build it all from source, there's a guide in GitHub as far as doing that, correct? Oh yeah, there was a question, uh, I think by, yes, by David. Um, there's dependencies, a large number of dependencies, but actually the installation of dependencies in, in Delphi is, is kind of automated. There's a tool called multi-installer that takes care of downloading the dependencies and installing them all in one step. So yes, um, it is kind of complicated to to compile PyScript from, from source, but uh, it is kind of semi-automated. So maybe that might be uh, something we could do, maybe make a video of, you could walk me through doing that sometime. So that yeah, that. Sure, sure, we can provide some support for people that want to compile. There we go. Let's see Especially get... about SourceForce and, and, and GitHub there, um, what is the relationship between the two repositories? Basically, the development takes place at GitHub, but the downloads are available via SourceForge. And the main reason for that is that SourceForge provides better tracking of the downloads than GitHub does. So that is, uh, and, and of course now, PyScript can also be downloaded directly from Embarcadero. So basically SourceForge is not used for development, but just for the downloading of the, of the releases of the executables. So um, you did go through the debugging support, but it does support traditional step-by-step -step debugging break points and all the, everything else you'd expect in debugging. Indeed it does, yes. Um, something about Anaconda, I mean, Rainier is asking about, um, PyScript does a good job of detecting Anaconda environments and, and loading them properly, switching between different environments. In fact, it also supports, I didn't mention that, but um, virtual machines as well, virtual environments, virtual environments, which can be either Conda environments or it can be Venv environments for those that are familiar with, or even virtual env, another way of creating Python. So it does support all the different types of uh, virtual machines and uh, virtual environments rather, uh, and Anaconda distributions. Is the Windows installer? Yes, indeed, at SourceForge, you get Windows installers. You get also zip free installations. So you can install, for example, without, uh, uh, sorry, we can use PyScripter without really installing, just by unzipping the distribution. So Rainer is saying he was able to compile it without problems. So yeah, there, there's a, a step by step guide and a couple of tools in there that walk you through all of this, the, everything that's involved there, so. I mean, just to mention there, I mean, obviously you need a kind of latest version or a late, a recent version of Delphi. So to, 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 to compile, so 10.4 something, I would think. Marco is asking about the documentation tool. This is this, this PyDoc, the standard Python documentation tool that's used by most Python modules produce also the standard Python documentation. So the automatic generation of the documentation is using PyDoc. PyDoc is the standard model for producing documentation in Python. What are some of the other tools that you can, you, you mentioned that you can integrate directly with Python tools, or are there some other Python tools that uh, integrate nicely with it? 
I mean, for example, linders, you can lint your code and get the diagnostics. You can use PyLint, for example. Um, the AutoPep. AutoPep is a tool in Python which formats your code according to some kind of guidelines. So it's similar to Pascal Formatter. You can easily integrate those tools using the external tools. That's something I haven't covered in this presentation, but um, I may have a chance to talk about this in the future in a future seminar, webinar, many others like um, type checking and stuff like that. All of these tools can be easily integrated with PyScript. And then there are questions and such people can, the uh, Google group for support, right? Y yes, yes, there is a PyScript or Google support um, group, which is kind of active as well. Yeah, indeed, that's, that's the place to ask questions. All right, well, thank you for all the work you've done on PyScripter. I'm really excited about this and excited to see where thank we can go with the, yeah, supporting this. So thanks for putting the webinar together and uh, I'm sure we'll see you online more. Excellent, thanks very much. Thanks, thank you guys. Thank you all for attending. Thanks very much indeed. Take care, bye-bye everybody.